so fun and I'm blah blah blah. That's cool. <laughs> Once again, welcome to another exciting episode of Kicking Doors with me, Smooly Open. Thank you so much for joining us. We are very excited to be back and chatting to you guys. Now, the reason I'm excited tonight is because I'm having a media entrepreneur and you know I'm a media person myself. I established a business in the music industry, you know, radio, television. That's pretty much my thing. And this brother that I have here, I've known him ever since we were all young and teenagers and establishing our first companies, which were independent record labels at the time. He's a hip-hop artist, he's a writer, he's a mentor, obviously an entrepreneur, record label owner, he's in the digital space. He also co-owned co um, a clothing brand, an advertising agency. So we'd like for you guys to also chip in on the conversation, share your thoughts. With us, follow us on our social media, that's CNBC Africa. Use the hashtag KickingDoors410. You can also follow me, my hashtag, sorry, my, my Twitter handle is at DJ Smoo. And then you can also find me on IG as um, DJ Smoo Live. Let's get the conversation going. I'm sitting down with that. Siya Mitane. Someone we all know as Slicker in the hip-hop scene or in South Africa. Over the years, he was able to create a formidable name for himself in South Africa's music landscape. Now, after a number of ups and downs, and lots and lots of successes, and um, a couple of setbacks and learnings and teachings um, that he's had to endure. Just like I did throughout my journey, he's taken his neck for business and created Slicker on Life. Welcome to the show, my brother. Thank you, thank you. How are you doing, Ben? I I'm great. You know, I, when, I, when, I, when I sit back and I think of how I used to um, drive in my old, uh, my old car, I think it was a Golf or something. It was a, it was a BMW. That, yeah, it was that, an that, old. That, <laughs> yeah, that would make us wait till the late because it got <laughs> stuck somewhere and it needed to get pushed. I remember that. I yeah. remember that. Yeah. It was exciting. I'd drive to Leondale, come to your mother's house. Yeah, And yeah. then look at my mother's and then go to the roof. Slicker is yeah, on the roof. Yeah, That's yeah. where your studios were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you think those days that you'll end up where we are today? I mean, this is never. almost over a decade later. Ne never, never. Um, I... I just literally made a decision this morning. I said, in order for me to grow, I must actually further and even do greater things. I must stop thinking that it's my life. Yeah. I need to start looking at this life like it's someone else's life. I need to look, stand aside and go, okay, that's what's happening to this guy. And, and, but, but when you look at it, we are now parents. Yes. And yes, what yes. I love about you and I, like we are young parents. Yeah. Our yeah. kids are still new and yeah, young. Yeah. yeah we're, yeah. we're enjoying the fatherhood. Yeah. How yeah, has yeah. fatherhood played a role in changing you in, in, in how you think? It's amazing because I was thinking just the other day with my son that my father was never like this with me. You know, we, I've got a relationship with my son, you know, and um, we, and he's only five years, six years actually. Yeah. But we, we, we talk, we hang, you know, there's, there's real affection, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, uh, it's all that matters, you know what I mean? Everything else in the world is just another layer. It's beautiful what yeah, you're saying. I, I hang yeah. out with, with um, a successful businessman as so we were having a meeting, I was chatting, I was actually in awe to have sat down with this guy for the first time. I've always admired his work yeah. for many years. And he was saying to me, whatever you're asking me to do for you in business, I'll assist you, I'll mm -hmm. do it. He says on one condition that I'm like, what is it? He's like, can you please come to my, my, my son's birthday on the 1st of October? Yeah, and I was yeah. like, of course, sir, yeah, that's an yeah, easy one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then he, he got into it, he says, the, there's, there's a certain stage in life that you get to and you, you, you understand certain things matter more than money. Yes, indeed. And, and yes. is that where you are right now? Yeah, for me, it's, um, it's like I say, everything else is a layer. And for me, time is about if I'm not if I'm not spending time with my son, um, it's about how am I creatively building something. Yeah. Which talk goes to I had to grow up from chasing money to building something. Yeah. And I've been good at chasing money. Now you were chasing money as a hip hop artist. Chasing money as a guy I believed was an entrepreneur. Yeah. Chasing money as a guy I believed was a business person. Yeah. So yeah. you are both not just an artist, by the way. You're also a leader of um, the squad. You're actually mo one of the founders Founding, yeah. of um, the biggest hip hop group in South Africa. For those who are watching in Kenya, Nigeria, the whole continent, this guy was the first guy that created, with, along with his childhood friends, they created a group that was the first hip hop group to get a platinum plug in South African hip hop. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I always say we, we bought the business. We bought the money in it. You know, respect to POC, respect to what Lance and them were doing with, with, with those guys in the beginning. But they were, still, they, they were still bringing the respect in it. We bought the money in it. 
and that, that that was our role in the business and ever since we bought the money and it's just become bigger and bigger and bigger forever for whoever come whoever kicks in the door and fights for it also. yeah but but you've always been an advocate you've always spoken out uh, mm. you know for hip-hop yeah. you've always spoken out for the youth culture yeah. and you've always been an entrepreneur yeah now moving let me not say moving from the music space but you, your involvement mm. from creating and making music and you know doubling up as an entrepreneur to fully you know growing as a as a as a businessman yeah i mean it, like i say it is a thing of i grew from the two types of entrepreneurs the entrepreneur that just chases the next chick the entrepreneur that builds like what you're doing with mo fire that's building for for the next 100 years the next 50 years we're in amazing times in south africa where you know um you could you could probably do both but you also have a chance to build. You also have a chance to create new things. We have the chances to create the new, the new media age, the new media companies, the new thinking of what an agency should be in Africa, the new, the, the, the new whatever Africans think is cool. Mm -hmm. we have, we, not everybody has that in the world. So other people just have to chase money. So I had to realize that I'm in a world where, especially when I had my son, I'm in a world where I have a chance to actually say, I can build this. Squatter Camp was something that never existed. Rap music, the money in rap never existed. There was no money, I remember. There's yeah. no money in rap. Uh, local rap, yeah. But no one has written it in the archives that actually the money in rap was created by something I was involved in. Mm. Because you know why? We were chasing money. But right now, we're chasing things where our names will be there and the money will be there. So I just need to chase building and the money will chase me. Now, as an entrepreneur, you're very diversified. You mm. ran a, a digital agency, yeah. advertising agent, successfully yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you moved on to starting your current venture, which is Slicker on Life. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, Slicker on Life for me was, um, like I say, uh, I was chasing something that will last forever. We know whether I'll have my name, whether, whether I'm involved or not. And I was saying, what are all the media guys doing? All the media guys, they're not building relationships with the con they don't. They're not saying to the content, to, to content owners that, we actually respect you and we need you. They saying we're gonna put you down. We wanna get a scandal. But I, my platform is like, I gotta, I'm one of the content owners. I want to show love. So we built a platform out of love. We bring new music because we love it. We talk about things that artists are going through because we love them and what they do. And that's, we, we become the biggest cult platform now. Now I go, okay, so how everyone else is making money? Everyone who sells does banners, does this, we go, but like, I understand the market. So then I partner I, I, with my current partners now, which is an established digital agency. I, I sold some shares. I said, I want to now sell strategy to tell these because if I've got the data and the analytics of the behavior, why can't I actually like come through and tell you how your marketing strategy should move on digital? Because everyone else is coming off of an idea or I, I'm also from the township. I said, yeah, I'm from the hood, but I got numbers. And that's what's been beating us as black people is that we've got ideas. We, the equ our equity is ideas, but we never have the technology to build the data. So I said, instead of me trying to be the content, let me actually be behind the content because mm. then I'll start owning the data. And once you own the data, there's so much more you can sell. Someone else can argue. You know, we say soccer is a debatable thing. Yeah. But once you got facts, you're powerful. Yeah. And that's how black people always get left behind in culture, especially, because it's not a real industry. It's because we, we don't have real numbers. We can, I sold platinum, I sold, but we can't show the behavior. We can't show all these little things, these analytics. Meanwhile, somebody else is making money off of us. So all the time in the South African marketing, I'll be, I will say it, for 80% of the time in South African marketing, especially black uh, uh, South African marketing, is an interpretation of us. It's not coming from it's us. Not really, it's not coming from us. That's yeah. why I slick on life. In two years, we, pr we, we probably like, like, we're probably the biggest urban music platform because I'm not interpreting. I will call up. You I will, are it. You live it. I, I, I am it. I live it. it. I'm a part of it. And even if I'm not doing it, the guys who, who are a part of it know my role in it. And this is the opportunity of us to build things, not make money. Why, why use culture? Because essentially that's the most neglected culture. I mean, I say this with all, dis with all respect, you know. Um, when we talk about who is running, um, let's just say, arts and culture, right? How do they know the struggle of TS going around with demos? 
Do they know the struggle of kids trying to break in the Do they know the struggle of radio? It's one thing to say you understand it. It's another thing to say you walk it. You know it, yeah. But we, so right now, this is the opportunity once again for us. The people who went through the pain have to now go, let us build things that will actually ease the pain for the next generation. And that is how we build businesses. That is how, that is how that's the entrepreneur I want to be. I want to ease the pain. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to make money and try to compete with my peers, with Casper, with AKA. No, I want to go. Yo, I can help you with this. I don't care how much money you got. Mm. I'm not competing with you. You know what I mean? I can help you with this. This is what you know. You might think you're making money, but yes, you're making money. But that doesn't mean that you understand this and that and that. And that's the role we want to play. Now, when I when we started, I mean, you know, probably internet was still around, but we didn't have any internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there wasn't yeah. any social media. Hey, hold media. up, hold up, hold up. Yeah. you had DJ Swoo. Uh, you had a, a website. Oh, DJ Swoo online. I DJ, remember yeah, that. Yeah. 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 But that's a couple of years later. But listen, yeah. I, I remember that. Like even Trevor, remember Trevor used to go, "Yo, yeah, I used to have ventilation." Because yeah, yeah, go, yeah, I remember ventilation. Yeah, he yeah. used to go. I want to sleep slightly scope away and I go to the other side. <laughs> and I was like, you know, you know, but that's dope. Yeah. You, he's always been a trendsetter, by mm. the way. So, you know, I had a very successful website working for a youth radio station called YFM. Man, mm. you know, we've always been, you know, copying how you were exactly. setting trends. Oh, well, as let me not say exactly, but thank you. Yeah, but it's, yeah. It's, you've been amazing at it yeah, and you've been yeah. very, very consistent. Thank I think you. that's the reason why you've got numbers and credibility because the industry respects you. Thank how you. has the growth of the internet community, or let me, let me say, how's the advancement of technology and bringing social media and end changed the music game, or let me say the youth culture? It's given nobody's like us a chance. It's giving nobody's like us who don't have historical wealth a chance. You know, it's given nobody's like us who are previously disadvantaged a chance. You know, um, it's given light. Nobody's like us who had to spend thousands and thousands on whether it's visual equipment, whether uh, or like to get an access to be known to get into this door a chance. Because all we now need to do is just just save up for that computer, save up for this, and save up for, and get this software. It's yo, it's it's a blessing. We the all the people, you know, the, the, the scum of the earth. We have a chance now. So black kids can be entrepreneurs. We have a chance Through their now. music, through content creation, through all sorts of different ways. Everybody has a voice. The, the world, all you got to do, uh, like I said the other day, you know, this social media world, digital world has brought us together. It's giving us a chance now. Because all the guys that were beating us, the guys who had the data and the analytics, they had systems that were worth millions and billions. Now, I just need... A, a little, phone. A, a phone. And data. And, and, and information. Yeah. And maybe it's not a lot, it's just some thousands. Yeah. We've got a chance now. Beautiful stuff. Now, yeah. but, uh, we've, got a, we've got a section on the show before I let you go, which yeah. we call 60 Seconds of Success. If yeah. you were to speak to our young entrepreneurs out there and give them that 60 Seconds of Success, what would you say to that camera over there? Well, 60 Seconds of Success, all I got to say is that choose what entrepreneur you are. Are you the one that's chasing or are you the one that's building? We have an opportunity right now in Africa to build because not everything is first world. We are the guys that have to move Africa to first world. Learn how to chase money, but learn how to build. That's the balance. That's when you are working for Africa and not just for yourself. That's